In Paddington, the Edgware Road is queuing northbound after an accident earlier at the junction. Всего 4 балла, только местами затруднения, все неплохо. Но кто застрял в пробке? All of the cities are different, right? But there's a common thing, there's this common thing that you can see in, in different people's eyes when you meet them. Uh, it's not something that they tell, it's not something that they say or they're trying to um, show. It's actually more about they're trying to hide. It's something that you can't even explain, but you can see that um, there's something that these people are seeking and looking for. They're looking for the opportunities. Now, what kind of the opportunities? It could be from, from jobs, it could be from um, the advices. What is this film about? It's about opportunities. What are they today? Can they, in fact, change our lives for the better? What really matters? What do our victories and success depend on? Is it help from the outside? or our own will, or maybe money. Is it possible that we cannot alter our ways and everything has been set up before? We've been filming this documentary all around the world. Have we found the answer? Let's see. Third world countries, what do we know about them? We've heard that poverty is rife there. Some say there's bad food and poor education. TV channels say that if you've been born in such a place, there's no hope for a brighter future. So we've heard pretty much. Is it really so hopeless? Are all these things true? This is the east of Africa. The legendary Maasai, wildlife, the famous tea and coffee beans. Kenya belongs to that very third world. Let's have a look at the people who live here and try to know them better. This is not my decision to be in this area. If I could get some, uh, some area to get more education, I can leave this place. Diana lives in a small village in the east of Kenya. She's 21, her own hands and an acre of land. That's about all she has, just 100 square meters to support living. No documents, almost no money. In Kenya, people have to pay for education, so Diana couldn't possibly get it. She doesn't study and doesn't have a job. You can see only electricity in these towns, in the rich families, but uh, most of families here, we have no electricity. Diana has never had a mobile phone or a TV. Diana has never used a computer. All her life consists of agricultural activities and household chores. The sun is up here for eight hours a day, and she has to do a lot within this period. Sometimes Diana gets lucky. If it rains long enough, she can hope for a good harvest and sell the excess on a market. A good month can bring her as much as $7. This young man gets much more money, $113 per month. His name is Chris. He lives in Namanga, a city on the border of Kenya and Tanzania. Chris has to spend almost half of his income on food. He also buys some clothes, pays for mobile charges, and gives one third of his wages to his mother and five sisters. A month ago, Chris left his mother's house and started living on his own. Now, the rent for a room takes $30 of what he makes in a month. This is my bed. This is where I sleep alone. This is my seat, uh, where I sit when, uh, while I'm listening to my music. Chris's biggest dream is to study. He wants to become a journalist, 
Education costs a lot of money, but he cannot put aside a single penny now. For the campus um, life, I, it's not that uh, cheap. I think it's around uh, maybe, let's say, 1.2 million to go to the campus to do the, what I wanted to do in life, yeah. Chris makes about 10,000 Kenyan shillings in a month, which is merely equal to $100. He works as a free transport agent helping truck drivers at the border with documentation. As in, come you call a document. His duties include calling the suppliers, checking the papers to be filled in correctly, sending the documents via email and whatnot. Musalama, eh? I say me to Chris, I am an agent. Lakini na marafiki zangu hapa watakuona vile nafanya kazi. Hatuna document tushapeana. Au umeshape na document? Ah. Mbona mko lakini mko sawa lakini? Asanteni. He can make about 500 shillings in a good day. It's about $5. Bad days bring nothing. Chris's mobile phone is his main working tool. So far, he's been using a simple phone with no means of internet connection or applications. A smartphone would make his life much easier. Actually, it could become a fully functional office for him. Soon, smartphones would become available for practically everybody. The cheapest model costs about $20 today. It's not a fancy gadget, but it can work with Android applications, has a 5 megapixel camera and 0.5 gigabyte of memory, and provides internet access. As a result, even people with low wages get a chance to put the whole world in their pockets. They also get a number of opportunities to make their lives better. Another thing, uh, the phone is too expensive for me to afford right now, at the moment. Uh, it will take, like, let's say, nine months, like, like, like nine months, if I'm saving, like, 100, I'm 200, 300 shillings, Kenya shillings. The average that I can earn is around 10,000 Kenya shillings. This is the smartphone Chris is dreaming about. It has a camera and internet access. Michelle has one. That is how it looks like when you wear it. Michelle also doesn't have any education, but she runs a small business of her own. She produces these eye-catching custom-made bijou. There are a lot of uh, tailors who are designing hair in Akuru, but accessorize, accessorizing was something unique that I could present to the market. These are the bangles, each costs uh, one dollar, yes. I also make these chokers, which cost three dollars. Michelle taught herself making accessories watching YouTube videos. Facebook helps her follow the trends. Messengers provide communication with customers. All this she can do with her smartphone. It will take me roughly 30 minutes to make a bangle, a choker and earrings. Every time I make something, I always take a picture. I post it on Facebook or send my friends on WhatsApp. Michelle keeps all orders info and even transfers money from one account to another. And she could do more if she had some extra tools to enlarge the clientele and to provide further business development. I have some plans to widen my business. I would really like to be supplying to most shops countrywide and outside the country. Even if I'm not going to employ 80 people, at least three or four lives will be changed and they will change other lives. This is an Oprah camera phone. Actually, this business has helped me buy this phone. So if I have this photo, let me just buy some bundles. Like, you have to have bundles to access the internet. The number of internet users in Kenya is increasing every year. Today, over 64% of Kenyans browse the web regularly. As for mobile internet, local cellular operators provide it for all smartphone owners within the country, with every fourth of them having the advantage of using 3G internet connection. The bundle which Michelle wants to buy is an internet service package. In Kenya, one gigabyte of downloaded data costs about $5. The average data transfer speed is 1.2 megabit per second. This is enough to get a stable internet connection. We are in Nairobi. This is Edna. 17, please exit with 
when the door is open. She's 25. Edna is a founder of her own startup in the energy area. She has a laptop with 24 7 internet access. The application which Edna is currently working on is going to become the incentive to foster the solar energy market in Kenya. It will help install solar panels all over the country so as to provide electricity to households and give common citizens an opportunity to earn money and profit from renewable energy usage. I want a great Kenya. I want a Kenya whereby I can see um, everyone using, like being passionate about something and just doing something about it. Because eventually it's not about like how much money you're gonna make by having a startup or anything. Just being involved in something that you're passionate about and committing yourself to that, it shows that you've actually identified who you are and what you want. And with that, you can easily get people to work together with, because we are not in a competitive world. We're in a world of partnership and collaboration. Today, over 48 million people live in Kenya. More than 80% of this number haven't turned 35 years old yet. This country has a great advantage which no one thinks about. Here, young people act as the main engine of development. High unemployment rates makes them seek for the ways to make their lives better. Many young people start small businesses. Now, small traders account for one third of Kenya's GDP. This sector is continuing to grow. It turns out that Kenya is not socially homogenous. The quality of life varies dramatically across the country. Electricity, smartphones, laptops and internet can serve as the factors that could raise it. New technologies and high-tech devices offer great opportunities for these people. They can give the people of Kenya the hope for things they could not properly think about, like proper education, new jobs or their own business. High technology has reached the third world. By now, hundreds of millions of people use gadgets with internet connection. However, about two and a half billion people fall in the unbanked category, which means they still remain outside the world economy. They don't have bank accounts. Sometimes they even don't have documents. They can't interact economically with each other or with the outer world. How can these unbanked people get incorporated in the global financial ecosystem? How can their fields of opportunities become more accessible, diverse and simple? This is a real challenge for developers. This is their opportunity to assert themselves and to help two and a half billion potential users who really need new technology. And now, let's move to the other side of the world, to London. This is Javed. He perfectly understands the problems those guys from Kenya have to deal with. I was born and raised in Karachi. Pakistan. I lived most of my life uh, initially there. Javed Katak knows how a single chance can alter the whole way of life. He came to London to study and stayed here for a living. The world of technology was changing before his eyes. When Javed just came to London, he had to spend much for international phone calls. He didn't call his family much back then. Now, he doesn't feel there are 5,000 miles between them. Distance doesn't matter while there's the technology. When I came to London, I think the biggest change for me was living away from my family uh, and close friends for the first time. And for me, that was a big impact. Javed and 120 more people from 16 countries are working on one of the global projects aimed at the financial inclusion of the people of the third world into the global economy. It was always very close to my heart to try and help people, to try and give back to society. So when I saw the Humanic app, and Humanic itself is trying to target the uh, around 3.5 billion people uh, which are underbanked or unbanked, and provide services, financial services to them so that they can lead a better life. They can access the same services that we in the West take for granted. 
Harmonique is a multifunctional, universal platform for unbanked people. It comprises a messenger, money transfer managing tool, and a digital ID. After a user is identified biometrically, he gets a unique digital passport. The only thing he should do is to make a selfie with a smartphone frontside camera and to record his voice in real time. The digital passport is tied to an electronic wallet, which enables the user to perform transactions, like to transfer, receive and earn real money without intermediaries or commission. These transactions become transparent due to the perspective blockchain technology. Every person in the world can get access to such a system. All he needs is just to buy a simple smartphone. The platform is based on the open source principle. It means that within the platform, every software developer can introduce his own service. It's a win-win situation for both developers and users. Humanic Project offers five major opportunities for our customers. Micro-aid, micro-loans, remote jobbing, remote education, and social networking. We're in Belarus, the outskirts of Grodno. Here, Sergei and his development team create a system which can erase all financial borders. Your phone should become your financial instrument. You can apply it to various tasks, from receiving a salary to paying for utilities and goods in stores. You can even take loans or pay for your kids' education. Sergei has been interested in technology since he was a child. It's in his blood. He took up higher technical education like his father had done. Later, he seriously got into a very perspective project based on the blockchain technology. Sergei is just 29. It's amazing that he has managed to collect so much experience in this area. He is overwhelmed with this project and ready to devote all his life to it. A startup presupposes a challenge. Success depends on you only. It's great when you take part in all the stages of the development process when you see the goals. You are not a robot fulfilling his task according to some instructions. You can always come up with your ideas and foster the development of the project. His job is an instrument which helps him make his life better. Moreover, it gives him a chance to create the technology which might change the lives of two and a half billion people. To make the technology come to every life sphere, the developers have to learn about customer development. That's why the humanic developers don't stay in offices. They go outside to talk to their prospective clients, so as to make the product which would meet their needs and expectations. Grace, Chad and Richard came to Kenya to talk in person to the people who need new opportunities to change the way they live. One of the meetings takes place at a church in a village in Kitwe region. Here, the church serves as the main culture and community center. People feel free here, so they can frankly tell the visitors about their problems and desires. Sometimes maybe you feel uh, they are favoring other people than you. Like they see as if like you are lying about your problems. So how do you prove that your problem is real? <laughs> The expedition members are listening attentively and taking records of every word they hear. Will the new financial infrastructure function precisely? It fully depends on these records. Grace, Richard and Chad are the finalists of a large-scale competition named Global Humanic Challenge. The project submitted for this competition aimed at making the lives of the third world people better. We have received a total number of 450 applications from more than 32 countries. We have selected three finalists that went to a road trip to Kenya. They all run their own projects which are really capable of altering the lives of the people they talk to. Grace's team, for example, has created an application which can provide jobs for the people of the third world and give them a chance to earn money. Chad is working on the digital ownership documenting system. In this country, this business area hasn't been explored yet. While it's necessary to be developed for every second person here has problems with such documentation, Chad's project is up to defending the ownership rights of all these people. Richard has invented the system that can help bringing financial support from the West to the countries that need it the most. 
His project is based on direct P2P money transfers. When we started to talk to people about blockchain in Guyana and how it could protect their property, people got very, very excited. So they were super excited about the prospect that they could trade freely and increase economic activity knowing that it would be safe and protected and secured and their investment would be protected. In fact, the situation with new technologies in Africa is not that difficult as it might seem. Up to 90% of Kenya's population have mobile phones. Almost a half of this number use smartphones. Over 28 million people here use mobile money. What is more, its application is not limited to buying things in online stores or small transfers between friends. It's also possible to pay in supermarkets with a smartphone. These days, there's a real boom of new technologies on the African market. Today, the international team is sharing their knowledge of internet financing with the people of this village in Kenya. They tell how it's becoming possible to work and earn money worldwide while staying at home. The only thing they need for it is a mobile phone and the will to do it. Technology can, is, not can, is the solution to change their lives because the cost of a mobile phone is definitely within everybody's reach, even the poorest, they will uh, find the money to have a mobile phone. And with that mobile phone, they can then connect to money, they can access finance, they can connect to information so they can know more about what they should be doing. The future of Kenya depends on Edna, Chris, Michelle, and all these young people. It's them who are looking for the opportunities to become successful and make their lives better, as well as bring their country to a new technical and economical level. If you're doing something, making just a slight change in your approach towards that thing can have a big impact on you know, the direction. This is Frank Dea. He is one of the leaders of the local startup industry. Frank is the man that Kenya and all Africa should be proud of. He and his friends are working on the creation of the first African cryptocurrency exchange. Through nature of, of, of Africa or an African, we, we also just want to get out of there, grab those opportunities, make something of ourselves, leave a name at the end of it all. So that ambition is there. Frank perfectly knows the problems which the people of Kenya have to deal with. The national currency is not stable. Moreover, its circulation is limited within the state border. That is why Frank believes in the world of finance without borders, and he is glad to say it out loud whenever he has a chance. Blockchain, it's pretty complicated, even for the very many people who are in this space at the moment, but we don't care what it is or how it works. They just need to utilize the service. So we're trying to cut across many industries by simplifying the service in a language that everyone will understand and without you know, creating so many complications. Blockchain is a distributed database. The fact that it is distributed makes this technology resistant to any kind of tampering. The information about the chains of transactions is stored at the devices of all the users taking part in the deal. As the result, transactions become transparent. We are just investing on creating awareness for it and um, trying to get people to register. And then we develop a pro program or a module on how we'll be teaching them. The money they'll be paying, half of it, will be going into their own investment. We're actually going to buy for them. Well, we're gonna teach them and then they'll end up buying for themselves. The so-called third world has a huge potential and a number of opportunities. Thousands of ambitious people in economically developed countries create those opportunities. They are not united by corporations, banks or politicians. They are united by an idea. It's ideas that foster the progress today. They create a new working format. When people are not tied with hierarchies, they become fully devoted to their projects and take control over their schedule. Each of them actively participates in the development of the project at all the stages. Using the term blue ocean, um, I wouldn't like to sort of define that term, but the way I understand that term is working with or working in areas where 
Nobody has gone before. We are trying to, like I said, innovate, disrupt, um, and bring about changes that nobody else has. The world is becoming a better place every day. We are the power that is reading this process. We are changing as well. We are creating new opportunities for this world, for ourselves, and for the people who had a more difficult start. There is a gap and there is an opportunity for people to, to come together. So, you know, one person's problem is another person's solution or, or you know, answer. If we want to make the world better, we have to act. All these people are endless sources of energy which can alter the way we live. Embrace the hard times because they teach you a lot. And never give up on your dream because your passion will take you places. And this passion will make the world look like we want it to be. Borders are created by governments, not people. Soon, they will not be able to constrain us. We can make this process go faster. It's real magic. A couple of years ago, no one could predict the things that are happening now. 99% of people would say it was impossible. Nevertheless, it's happening. It's getting into our lives no matter whether we want it or not. It's coming. Who knows, maybe one day we'll be the silicon of Africa, yeah? <laughs> this film is about opportunities. We are born and raised under different circumstances. This is nothing we can change, but we can decide for ourselves what we are going to be and how much money we will earn. We can choose the future for ourselves and our children. Opportunities, this is what we need. Join Humanic Challenge.